I get it. You've seen too many videos about the Dark Knight and how Christopher Nolan revived the superhero genre with his gritty dark reboots and the film bros all absolutely love it. Or maybe you've heard too much about how Christopher Nolan loves using time as a theme, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. My favorite film that Chris Nolan has ever made is Memento. I love it because it doesn't just play with time or have some gritty feel. It involves the audience through manipulation and makes you care more. My name's Josh Taylor, this is 1901, and today I want to talk about how Christopher Nolan uses editing to not only tell his stories, but to show you the psychology within his characters, and in turn using that psychology to make you feel what those characters feel. If you didn't know, this video is part of a monthly series we call The Director Project, where a bunch of different YouTubers, as well as myself, get together to celebrate the works of a certain director. This month, we're talking about Christopher Nolan. There is a link to the playlist in the description down below, and I'll also have that link at the very end of this video. That way you can see all of our different videos compiled together in one place. And if you're interested in adding your own video to the playlist, you can. Just make a video and then send a tweet over to at Cult Popsher on Twitter. They'll definitely add you to the playlist and you'll get to hang out with us and talk about Christopher Nolan and isn't that awesome? Hooray! Anyways, let's talk about Memento. Leonard, look, you have to be very careful. Why? The other day you mentioned that maybe somebody was trying to set you up get you to kill the wrong guy. Oh, well, I go on facts, not recommendations, but thank you. Released in the year 2000, on the outside, Memento looks like a film with some kind of gimmick attached to it. It's a reinvention of the film noir murder mystery. But its gimmick isn't just a way to tell the story. If you've never seen Memento, the film is chopped up into several scenes, with half of the film in black and white moving forward in time, and the other half in color moving backwards. The black and white scenes often feature our protagonist, Lenny. Please call me Leonard. My wife called me Lenny. Telling a story about Sammy Jenkins, a man with short-term memory loss. These scenes are spliced up as a way to serve exposition between the scenes that are in color. Each scene in color ends where the last one began, so the audience is slowly able to piece together the mystery that's revealed at the center of the story. But what this type of storytelling provides to the viewer goes beyond just unraveling some murder mystery. Our protagonist is unable to remember things that have happened to him 15 minutes before. His only way of recollection is through a series of photos and notes, some written down, some tattooed on his body. To simulate the feeling of Lenny's short-term memory, the audience is tossed into a new scene every few minutes, without any explanation of where we are or what happened before. It's confusing, and it teeters on the edge of exhausting and frustrating, without ever making the viewer want to stop watching. There is a magic in the way the story is told. It's manipulating our emotions, but in a way that enhances our investment. Sure, it wouldn't have been that hard to just tell this story straightforward. You could take apart this puzzle and put it all back together in the correct way, and many people have. There's actually a version of Memento out there that's completely linear. But the original theatrical release of Memento gives us more than just a story to watch. It psychologically involves us in that story. And in some ways, we actually become the protagonist ourselves. We embody who Leonard is. Sure, we can probably remember the previous scene, which helps us slowly connect the dots of this mystery together rather than writing them down on notes or taking photos, but we still get those raw feelings of confusion and distrust that our protagonist gets throughout this entire film. And Nolan has carried this trait of using psychology through editing into his other films, once again manipulating audiences to further invest into his stories. For example, there's a scene in Interstellar where the crew lands on Miller's planet and as Cooper states that every hour here is seven years on Earth, a subtle ticking sound starts to appear in the background. 
Yes, it's a way to showcase that every second or every one and a half seconds that occur, another day goes by on Earth, but it also hits the audience subconsciously. As the viewer, you feel an urge to rush along with the crew, that they aren't moving fast enough for you. It's a tick that's just loud enough to make you anxious about the unknown and the passing of time, giving you the same feeling that our crew members have. Of course, Memento or Interstellar or any of these films don't have these manipulative moments when they're just being shot or acted out. These camera cuts and audio additions come in post-production, and a good edit of a film can change how we feel about a scene or a character. Another example, in The Dark Knight, the scene where the Joker comes to the dinner party begins with a bunch of frantic camera cuts from one person to another, and a musical score that's ascending and getting louder. Then it all comes to a sudden halt, as the Joker steps off the elevator and joins the party by shooting a single round into the roof. The camera continues to follow the villain as he meanders the floor eating hors d'oeuvres and sipping down drinks. The silence in the room is uncomfortable, and the choice for the camera to never leave the Joker makes you, as the viewer, part of that party. Afraid to stop looking at the man who might kill you, and terrified to speak up and draw attention to yourself. These kinds of choices continued to make Christopher Nolan one of the new top directors in Hollywood. He, along with his wife and his brother, who team up on a lot of these different films, at least typically, have really made a name for themselves in making the audience feel something. Sure, a big blockbuster film might make you cheer, or a horror movie might make you wince in fear, but Christopher Nolan isn't interesting in just cheers and boos. And he also knows how to keep an audience in the seat while making them feel as if they're the protagonists, sharing the same emotions. Let's get back to Memento. In a scene where Leonard is in Natalie's house, he seems blissfully ignorant as she walks in the door. She seems upset and starts to go off about someone named Dodd. The camera cuts and moves as if we were seeing through Leonard's eyes. We watch Natalie stuff a ton of pens into her purse and then follow her around the room as she continues to get angrier. The over-the-shoulder shots linger much longer than the shots of Leonard. In this scene, we're supposed to feel like him. At first confused, but then we become more and more on edge as Natalie continues to berate Leonard. Making the scene more and more irritating, and as Leonard panics to not forget this moment, the camera begins to shake, creating chaos and a sense of urgency. This style of filmmaking didn't go unnoticed as award season came for Memento either. Memento would be nominated for Best Original Screenplay and Best Editing at the Academy Awards and would win a bunch of Independent Spirit Awards that year as well, including Best Supporting Female, Best Director, Best Film, and Best Screenplay. Memento was truly Nolan's ticket to Hollywood, his first major success that would catapult him to making all kinds of movies in the future. Christopher Nolan might end up as one of those directors that gets known for bringing real science into science fiction, or by having some serious social statement, or even for maybe starting the gritty reboot of superhero films that eventually turned into the R-rated superhero films that we have now. But for my money, I think we should focus more on the details of his filmmaking. He's a visionary that not only tells a good story, but is somebody that brings the audience along into those films, making them characters. He's someone that understands psychology and what makes us feel certain things. And he uses every tool imaginable, whether that's on set, or in post-production later. And all of these tools help us understand his characters. Whether they're heroes or villains or in some gray area in between, Christopher Nolan understands that humanizing characters by using their emotions is vital to a story. And in some way, he can showcase that the characters on screen are just like us, human. Thank you for watching this video. I absolutely love doing the director project. I've been able to check out some different films from some different directors I didn't know about. Obviously I knew about Chris Nolan and I got the chance to share my love for the film Memento, uh, which I wouldn't have gotten to do 
in any other circumstance. So make sure to check out the entire playlist uh, over yonder. I believe it's over here or over here somewhere. Uh, you can check out the playlist, see everybody's videos. Uh, also, I'll leave in the description below the playlist for the Steven Spielberg month and for the Hayao Miyazaki month, so you can check those out as well. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. And until next time, my friends, keep moving forward.